to access free topic sheets, worksheets or to book an online class, visit ilearneasy.co.uk. Layers of Earth In this video, we will learn about the layers of Earth. The Earth is made up of different layers. The four main layers are the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. Each layer can be divided further. Continental crust, oceanic crust, upper mantle, lower mantle, outer core and inner core. The crust. There are two types of crusts, continental and oceanic. The crust is the thin outer layer of the earth. The crust is about 15 to 25 kilometers thick. The continental crust under continents is about 25 miles thick and the oceanic crust under the oceans is about 5 miles thick. The crust is essentially the solid rock layer that we live on. It consists of rocks, soil and everything else we can see on the Earth's surface. The crust is broken into plates like a big jigsaw puzzle. These are known as tectonic plates. These tectonic plates move around very slowly, only a few centimetres every year. But we can't feel this movement unless there is an earthquake. The Earth's crust floats above the next layer, which is the mantle. The Earth's crust only occupies less than 1% of the Earth's volume. The mantle. The mantle is the thickest and largest section of the Earth. The mantle makes up about 85% of the total mass of the Earth. It's about 2,900 kilometers thick. This layer is made up of very hard rocks and hot solid rocks. A lot of the planet's mantle consists of magma. Magma is liquid or semi-liquid rock in the Earth's surface. The temperature of this layer is extremely hot. It becomes hotter the further down we go. Magma can push through holes or cracks in the crust. These can cause volcanic eruptions. When magma flows or erupts onto the Earth's surface, it's called lava. The outer core. The outer core is the layer which surrounds the inner core. It's about 2,200 kilometers thick. The outer core is made up of very hot liquid iron and nickel. These are both metals. This layer is also extremely hot. The inner core. The inner core is right in the center of the earth. It's the hottest part of the earth. It's nearly as hot as the surface of the sun. The extreme pressure in the inner core is what makes it solid. The inner core is also made up of iron and nickel, just like the outer core. However, because the inner core is so hot and there's extreme pressure, this makes it solid. The inner core is about 12 to 1500 kilometers thick. So, to summarize, the Earth has four main layers. These include the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. The crust is the thin outer layer of the Earth. It's the solid rock that we live on. It can either be continental or oceanic. The mantle is the next layer. It's the thickest layer of the Earth. This layer is mostly made up of magma. The outer core is the layer which surrounds the inner core. It's a liquid layer made up of the metals iron and nickel. The inner core is right in the center of the earth. It's the hottest part. It's solid 
and it's made up of the metals iron and nickel. Layers of the Atmosphere The Earth's atmosphere has five main layers and several secondary layers. The five main layers include the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Troposphere the troposphere is the lowest atmospheric layer. It extends from the Earth's surface to about 10 to 12 miles in height. This layer contains several things, including all the air that plants need for photosynthesis and that animals need to breathe. The troposphere also contains about 99% of all water vapour and aerosols. Most of the Earth's weather happens in this layer. Almost all clouds that are generated by weather are found in the troposphere. The temperature of this layer decreases the higher you go. This is because most of the heat found in the troposphere is generated by the transfer of energy from the Earth's surface. The troposphere is also the densest atmospheric layer. This is because it's compressed by the weight of the rest of the atmosphere above it. So, to summarise, the troposphere is the lowest layer, most of the Earth's weather happens in this layer, the temperature decreases with increase in altitude, and it's the densest layer. Stratosphere the stratosphere is the second lowest layer in the Earth's atmosphere. It's approximately 30 to 35 miles above the Earth's surface. 
This layer contains the Earth's ozone layer. The ozone layer is the layer in the atmosphere that helps to absorb the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. This UV radiation is the reason why the temperature in the stratosphere becomes warmer the higher up you go. The stratosphere is the highest part of the atmosphere that airplanes can fly around in. And unlike the troposphere, the stratosphere is nearly cloud and weather free. So to summarize, the stratosphere is the second layer. It contains the Earth's ozone layer. And it's cloud and weather free. Mesosphere. The mesosphere is located about 50 miles above the Earth's surface. This layer gets progressively colder with altitude, so the higher up we go in this layer, the colder it will become. The top of the mesosphere layer has an average temperature of about minus 85 degrees Celsius. This is the coldest place found within the Earth's system. Most meteors will burn upon entry into the mesosphere. So to summarize, the mesosphere is the third layer in the atmosphere. And it's a very cold layer. Thermosphere. The thermosphere is located about 400 miles above the Earth's surface. The air in this layer is very thin and the temperature can become very hot. The temperature increases with altitude, so the temperature rises the higher we go. This is due to the very low density of molecules found in this layer. This layer is both cloud and water vapour free. The thermosphere's lowest layer contains the ionosphere. This is the layer in which most atoms are ionised and where electrical charge is found. The thermosphere is also where the aurora occurs. This is commonly known as the southern and northern lights. So to summarise, the thermosphere is the fourth layer. The air in this layer is very thin and this layer can become quite hot. It's cloud and water vapour free. It contains the ionosphere and it's where the aurora occurs. Exosphere. The exosphere is located about 6,200 miles above Earth's surface. It's the highest layer of the Earth's atmosphere. The air is very thin in this layer and there is also no weather at all. The molecules found in the exosphere are of extremely low density. Therefore, this layer doesn't behave like a gas and the particles in this layer escape into space. Most Earth satellites orbit in the exosphere. So to summarise, the troposphere is the lowest layer, the temperature decreases with increase in altitude, and it's the densest layer. The stratosphere is the second layer. It contains the Earth's ozone layer and it's cloud and weather free. The mesosphere is the third layer and it can become very cold. The thermosphere is the fourth layer. The air in this layer is very thin and it can become very hot. It is cloud and water vapour free. It contains the ionosphere and it's where the aurora occurs. The exosphere is the fifth layer. It contains very thin air and there is no weather in this layer.
There are five layers of soil. These include the organic layer, topsoil, subsoil, parent material, and bedrock. The organic layer is also known as the O horizon. The organic layer is the top layer consisting of plant remains such as leaves, twigs, and other organic material which have decomposed and form hummus. Hummus contains many nutrient materials that are required to improve health and fertility of the soil. We can identify how fertile the soil is at this layer. The topsoil is also known as A horizon. The topsoil is the layer consisting of organic matter and minerals which help plant growth. This is the layer in which we plant seeds. Both plants and organisms live in this layer. The subsoil is also known as B horizon. The subsoil is the compact layer consisting of organic matter, clay and minerals. It's a hard layer in which some long roots can reach. The parent material is also known as C horizon. The parent material is the layer consisting of large rocks. The upper layers are developed from this layer. There is no organic matter or plants in this layer. The bedrock is the bottom layer. It's the hardest layer as it mainly consists of large solid rocks. There are three types of rocks. Igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. These rocks are all formed in different ways. Igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are made from melted rocks and minerals. They form when magma cools down and solidifies. An example of an igneous rock is granite. Sedimentary rocks. These rocks are made from lots of small pieces of material such as small rocks, plant or animal remains. They are formed from sediment that has settled at the bottom of lakes, seas and oceans. This sediment has been compressed over time and the rocks form layers on top of one another. Fossils are mostly found in sedimentary rocks. An example of a sedimentary rock is limestone. Metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are formed when igneous or sedimentary rocks are heated at a high temperature and then compressed under great pressure. The high temperature and pressure causes the rocks to change into other types of rocks. This process takes a very long time. An example of a metamorphic rock is marble. Marble originates from limestone. Fossils. Fossils are remains or imprints of dead plants or animals. Fossilization is the process by which a fossil is formed. This process requires specific conditions. Fossils are mostly found in sedimentary rocks. So how are fossils formed? When an animal dies, the dead remains sink to the ground and slowly get covered in mud and sand. The soft parts of its body decompose leaving the hard parts such as the skeleton. Over time, more layers of sediment form on top. The sediment around the skeleton starts to compact and turn into rock. The bones then begin to dissolve by water. The minerals in the water replace the bone which leaves a print of the animal on the rock. Tectonic plates the earth is made up of different layers. 
The four main layers are the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. The crust is the thin outer layer of the earth. It's about 15 to 25 kilometers thick. The crust thickness ranges depending on whether it's beneath oceans or beneath continents. It's essentially the solid thick layer that we live on. It consists of rocks, soil and everything else we can see on the earth's surface. There are two types of crusts, continental and oceanic. The crust is broken into plates like a big jigsaw puzzle. These are known as tectonic plates. These tectonic plates move very slowly, only a few centimetres every year. The Earth's crust floats above the next layer, which is called the mantle. The Earth's crust only occupies less than 1% of the Earth's volume. Tectonic plates are large pieces of rock that divide the Earth's crust. These continental and oceanic crusts move constantly to reshape the Earth's landscape. The Earth's outermost layer, also known as the lithosphere, is made up of the crust and the upper mantle. The plate tectonics theory states that this outermost layer is broken into large rocky plates. These tectonic plates are all different shapes and sizes, but they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. These large rocky plates lie on top of a partially molten layer of rock, called the asthenosphere. The theory suggests that these plates move relative to each other at different rates due to the convection of the asthenosphere and lithosphere. The movement is small about 2 to 15 centimetres per year. The theory of plate tectonics explains how the movement of these geologic plates creates major landforms such as mountain building, volcanoes and earthquakes. The theory was solidified in the 1960s. In 1912, a German scientist published the concept called continental drift. He suggested that over 200 million years ago, a supercontinent began to break into pieces and moved away from one another. He called this supercontinent Pangaea. The process of this supercontinent breaking into pieces and these pieces moving away from one another are all the different continents that we see today. Although this theory was dismissed at first, it was later accepted due to new data that supported the idea of continental drift or plate tectonics. The heat and pressure in the earth results in convection currents in the mantle layer of the earth. This causes the tectonic plates to move around. Tectonic plates meet each other at their plate margins. There are three types of plate margins. The type of plate margin depends on the type of movement that occurs. Constructive plate margin, also known as divergent. This is when the plates move away from each other. This results in a gap in which the magma seeps through, cools down and forms geological features such as volcanoes. Destructive plate margin. This is also known as convergent. This is when the plates move towards each other. This results in the plates smashing against each other. It can either push both upwards, which forms fold mountains, or one plate goes under and the other is pushed up. This forms deep trenches or results in earthquakes. Conservative plate margin. This is also known as transform. This is when two plates slide against each other, either in the same direction or different directions at different speeds. This can result in earthquakes.
Tectonic plates meet each other at their plate margins. There are three types of plate margins. The type of plate margin depends on the type of movement that occurs. Constructive plate margin, also known as divergent. This is when the plates move away from each other. This results in a gap in which the magma seeps through, cools down and forms geological features such as volcanoes. Destructive plate margin. This is also known as convergent. This is when the plates move towards each other. This results in the plates smashing against each other. It can either push both upwards, which forms fold mountains, or one plate goes under and the other is pushed up. This forms deep trenches or results in earthquakes. Conservative plate margin, this is also known as transform. This is when two plates slide against each other either in the same direction or different directions at different speeds. This can result in earthquakes. Earth spheres. There are four spheres of the Earth. The four spheres of Earth are the atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere and biosphere. These are the four subsystems in which the Earth can be split into. These include the air, water, land and all living things. The atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere are abiotic. This means they are all non-living things. The biosphere contains all biotic or living creatures and organisms. These include plants, animals, bacteria, etc. All the four spheres must work together to allow for the successful balance of life on Earth. Any threat to one sphere will have drastic effects on all the others. Atmosphere This is essentially the air. It is primarily made up of the gases nitrogen, oxygen, argon and the remaining are other gases such as water vapour, carbon dioxide, methane, neon, etc. Nitrogen makes up about 78% of the atmosphere. Oxygen makes up about 21% of the atmosphere. Argon makes up about 0.9% of the atmosphere and the remaining gases make up 0.1%. The atmosphere is held in place around the Earth by the force of gravity, almost like a bubble around the Earth. The force of gravity helps to prevent the vapours from escaping into outer space. The atmosphere is very important as this is what makes the Earth inhabitable. The atmosphere also helps to create a barrier between the Earth and the sun's rays. The sun's rays can be harmful, therefore this barrier created by the atmosphere creates a safe environment in which living things can thrive. The atmosphere itself can be further separated into five layers. These include the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Hydrosphere The hydrosphere is the water sphere of Earth. Water covers about 71% of the Earth's surface. This includes all the water found on Earth's surface, including in oceans, seas, rivers, lakes, water underground, and even the water in the air. This water can be found in different forms, such as liquid, solid, or vapour. The liquid form of water is commonly found in lakes, seas, oceans, rivers and underground. These natural water sources are vital for plant and animal life. The solid form of water is seen as icebergs, snows, glaciers, frozen lakes, etc. 
These play an important role in the system too. They help to regulate the global climate and many animals rely on conditions like these to survive. Water vapour refers to water that has evaporated, so it takes on a gaseous state, including clouds and fogs. Water vapour plays an important role in the water cycle. The water cycle is the way in which water continuously circulates within the earth and the atmosphere. When liquid water evaporates from the earth's surface, it turns into a gas and becomes part of the atmosphere. For example, when it rains and a puddle forms, the liquid in the puddle can be dried up in the sun. This forces the water molecules to change and to evaporate. Now, in a gas form, the water molecules form a cloud. The cloud in the air collects more moisture until it becomes so heavy with water vapour that the vapour becomes liquid again and falls back to the earth's surface in the form of rain. Lithosphere The lithosphere is also sometimes known as the geosphere. The earth is split into four main layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. The lithosphere is the rocky outer surface of the Earth's crust and the upper portion of the mantle. The lithosphere is essentially the land on which biological life exists. Biosphere The biosphere is the sphere of Earth which includes all organic living life. This includes living things on the Earth's surface, in the atmosphere and underground. Examples of living things include animals, plants, insects, birds, bacteria, etc. This life found on Earth is then divided into a series of classifications, including kingdoms, phylum, classes, orders, families, genus and species. There are five different kingdoms. These are animal, plant, fungi, protist and monera. The biosphere is further broken into biomes and ecosystems. These are specific working systems of plants and animals in different areas that work together to keep a good balance of life on earth. Continents A continent is one of Earth's seven main divisions of land. When we look at a globe, continents are the easiest thing to spot as they are large solid areas of land. All the continents are different shapes and sizes. There are seven continents. The seven continents from the largest to the smallest are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe and Australia. All the continents have different kinds of weather, landscapes, environments and populations. For example, Antarctica is very cold and icy. It has little plant and animal life, whereas Africa is very warm 
and it has a variety of plants and animals. Most of the continents are also divided into political units called countries. Now let's look at each continent in detail. Asia Asia is the largest continent. It covers one third of all of the land on Earth. Asia is surrounded by the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. There are 48 countries in Asia, which are home to two-thirds of the world's population. There are over 2,300 languages spoken in Asia. The most populated countries in the world are China and India, both being home to nearly one billion people each. This continent has many natural wonders, such as high mountains, deserts and the highest plateau. Africa Africa is the second largest continent. This continent lies between the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean. There are 54 countries in Africa. This continent has many natural wonders such as the world's largest desert, the Sahara Desert and the world's longest river the Nile. The Sahara Desert is located in the north of Africa and the river is located in the east of Africa. As well as being home to a large population of people, Africa is also home to many wild animals including elephants, rhinos, wild cats, zebras and many more. North America North America is the third largest continent. It's surrounded by the Arctic Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Caribbean Sea and the North Pacific Ocean. There are 25 countries in North America. The USA, Canada and Mexico are some examples. This continent has many natural wonders including the Grand Canyon and national parks such as the Yellowstone National Park, Denali National Park and the Arches National Park. South America South America is the fourth largest continent. It is bordered on the west by the Pacific Ocean and on the north and east by the Atlantic Ocean. North America and the Caribbean Sea lie to the northwest of South America. There are 12 sovereign states in South America. Brazil, Argentina and Colombia are some examples. This continent has many natural wonders such as rainforests, the world's driest desert and the Amazon River. As well as being home to these natural wonders, South America is also home to many unique animals including llamas, anacondas, capybaras and many others. Antarctica Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. This continent is surrounded by the Southern Ocean. The temperature in Antarctica is very cold and most of it is covered in ice. Antarctica is home to many species such as seals, penguins, birds and many animals. Europe Europe is the sixth largest continent. There are 44 countries in Europe which are home to a quarter of the world's population. Many different cultures and languages exist in Europe. Sometimes people think of Europe and Asia as a single continent. They call this Eurasia. Australia Australia is a continent that is also a country. This is because it's the only continent that's occupied by a single country. Australia is surrounded by the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Australasia refers to Australia, 
New Zealand and other islands in the Pacific Ocean. Australia is known for its natural wonders and range of wild animals. In 1912, a German scientist came up with the idea that the continents were all once joined together. He called this large body of land Pangaea. He suggested that more than 200 million years ago, Pangaea split apart to form continents. The continents then drifted apart to their current locations. Scientists since then have found evidence that this idea was correct. They now believe that the continents sit on a number of large plates. The plates float on a layer of melted rock. As the plates slide over the melted rock, the continents also move. This idea is called plate tectonics.